I'm a mother to a young black male, a baby right now, only two, but a young black male nonetheless. And in this country, his kind is overlooked. He's essentially endangered. Endangered? Yes, I said it. His kind is being killed off, erased and ignored in play and in real life. This reality leaves me with a million questions about how to educate my son in a world that does not believe in him the way that I do and will. I am in constant search for positive role models. I look for one in books, search for one in the toy section, look on television, long for one in cartoons, listen for one in music. And I have to say my search is often a tiring, fruitless, and disappointing one. We all want our children to force their own paths, yet also share an interest in at least one of our own passions. Since my current passion is mathematics, I am eager for my son to understand the opportunities he has in math. Enter Albert Cox. Born on December 5, 1895 in Evansville, Indiana, Albert was the son of Eugenia and Johnson Cox. Johnson, Albert's father, was a principal of a local school and undoubtedly influenced his gifted son's interest in academics. Albert's many talents included playing the violin, a gift that afforded him a scholarship to the Prague Conservatory of Music. More interested in furthering his academic education, Albert attended Indiana University instead. It was there that Albert was able to feed his love of mathematics and physics. His love was evident to his instructors as he scored an A on every examination he was given. He graduated in 1917. One year later, he would join the Army at the end of World War I. Both before he left for the Army and after his return, Albert taught mathematics in a local high school, then later at Shaw University in North Carolina. After his Army stint, he began to take summer math courses at Cornell University in 1920. Driven again by persistent math bug, Albert left Shaw and continued mathematics coursework at Cornell. In December of 1921, he received his full scholarship as an Erastus Brooks Fellow. That moment would set into motion Albert's future and the future of black mathematicians to come. In 1925, to complete his program and achieve what had never been achieved before by a black American, Albert Cox defended his thesis. Let's try to get a grasp of Albert's brilliance. According to two researchers at Appalachian State University, Dr. Sarah Greenwald and Jonathan Daniel, one can start to grasp Elbert's topic by connecting it to the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence is such that when you arrive at the third number, the pattern is realized. The forthcoming numbers are the sums of the two preceding numbers. Greenwald and Daniel explain this can be notated by y times the quantity of k plus 2 equals y times the quantity of k plus 1 plus y times k, where k equals 0, 1, 2, etc. Greenwald and Daniel explain in the Fibonacci difference equation n equals 2 and the order is 2. The order of a difference equation is defined by the difference between the highest and the lowest terms in the equation. This is how difference equations get their name. Cox did work on the difference equation a times f times x plus 1 plus b times f times x equals q times x, where a and b are complex numbers that do not equal 0 and whose sums do not equal 0. The complexity of his math is visible on these two slides. In 1925, Albert's PhD was well earned and his accomplishment enabled African American mathematicians like Euphemia Lofton Haynes and Marjorie Lee Brown to follow in his footsteps. Dr. Cox later became a professor of physics at West Virginia State College. Four years later, Dr. Cox would join Howard University's faculty as an associate professor and again would affect the positive change with his gift of mathematics. He influenced the grading system at the university, served as chair of the mathematics department two different times during his career there, and he taught engineering science and war management during the Second World War, all while the country in which he lived was still not sure whether a man of color could possess such a remarkable level of intelligence. Dr. Cox, who passed away in 1969, left a legacy of mathematics accomplishments which are honored today by a scholarship in his name at Howard University and by the Cox Talbot Lecture, an annual speech given at the National Association of Mathematicians Annual Banquet. In a world when black male mathematicians aren't celebrated in the mainstream and in a subject area which strives for equity and justice, Dr. Albert Cox's name should be shared with all students, but especially with little black boys in every math class, so they can dream of and realize their potential and possibilities through his example and accomplishments. And now please excuse me while I go tell my son that he can become a mathematician with a PhD too, because of Dr. Albert Cox.